In this video, we solve problem 6.2.7 from Essentials of Statistics, sixth edition by Mario Triola. The problem statement says, find the area of the shaded region. The graph to the right depicts IQ scores of adults, and those scores are normally distributed with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. So it looks like we want the probability that an IQ score is between 80 and 110. In order to work this out, I'll share my paper with you and then we'll use the um, table A2 that I have on my computer here. Okay. So I want the area of the shaded region, which is the same as the probability that those IQ scores were between, and this was an IQ score of X equals 80 and this was an IQ score of X equals 110. And in order to figure that out, um, we can find the corresponding Z scores that go with 80 and 110. Whoops, I'm not gonna need that one there. We can find those d-squares just using our formulas. It's super, super easy. Okay, so here we go. Um, so z is equal to x minus the mean. That's giving us a deviation from the mean. And then we divide by the standard deviation and that gives us a number of standard deviations from the, from the mean. Um, that gives us our z-score. So for x equals 80, we'll have this z equals 80 minus the mean, which is 100, whoops, divided by the standard deviation. So we've got negative 20 over 15, and that's negative five times four over five times three. So it's approximately negative 1.33. So that's our lower z value. And that's consistent with intuition because this is the mean. And then if I add one standard deviation to that, I get to 115. And if I subtract one standard deviation from that, I get to 85. If I subtract one standard deviation from that, I'm subtracting 15 again, I get um, 70 and so on. So this x equals 80 is between um, one standard deviation below the mean and two standard deviations below the mean. So z equals negative 1.33, that makes sense to me because it's right here in between that, that first and second standard deviation below the mean. Okay, so that, that makes sense and that's the z-score that we get that goes with that. Now let's do the same thing for 110. Now notice that 110 is between this 100 and the 115. Now 115 is one standard deviation above the mean. So 110, I would expect that to be somewhere between um, zero standard deviations and one standard deviation. And since we're going like 10 units um, in the direction of something that's 15 units long, I bet that that's uh, two thirds or 0 0.67, but let's, let's work that out. So we'll have um, 110 minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So we've got a deviation of 10 from the mean, we divide by the standard deviation and that's two thirds, which is approximately 0 0.67. Oops, I was writing on top of that. Uh, white out for a second there. Okay, now remember, whenever you're calculating these probabilities where z is um, between two values, basically what you wanna do is you wanna take the area of the larger region. So I want this area, and then I wanna subtract that white area there. Well, the area of the larger region is the probability that z is less than 0 0.67 because that 0 0.67 corresponds to that um, x equals 110 value there. And then we want to subtract the probability that x is less than 80 
but subtracting the probability that X is less, less than 80 is subtracting the probability that Z is less than negative 1.33 same thing. So you could take this and translate it into a corresponding difference of probabilities um, for x and then convert each of those to z's, or you can do what I did and convert to z's first and then do this. But either way, you're going to get the same answer. So now we just need to find the area to the left of z equals 0 0.67 and the area to the left of z equals negative 1.33. We can use our table. We can also use Excel. I think I'll do both this time so that I can show you and remind you how to use Excel to find these values. So let's go to our table. All right, I want Z to be less than 0 0.67. And these are negative Z values over here. So I wanna go to the positive Z values page. And I'm looking for 0 0.67. So I go to 0 0.6. That's 0 0.60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, and 67. So that area is right there. That's 0 0.67. Okay, so that area to the left of z equals 0 0.67 happens to be 0 0.7486. And now we want to subtract the area to the left of z or area to the left of z equals negative 1.33. So we'll go to the negative z scores page, go to negative 1.3. So we're here. And then we look for negative 1.30, 1.3. 31, 1.32, and 1.33. I will circle that. So that's that value right there. So you have 0 0.0918. If you subtract those two guys, you're going to get the probability that our x values lie between 80 and 110, or alternatively, the probability that someone, a randomly selected person, has uh, an IQ score between 80 and 110 which is the same as the probability that Z is between one of these two standard Z scores or these two um, Z scores, which are standardized values of that X. Okay, let's work that out. 0 0.7486 minus 0 0.0 918 equals, we get approximately, well, I get exactly this, but these uh, probabilities from the table are approximate, um, 0 0.6568. Now, if I wanted to find these values using Excel, I could do that. And I would highly recommend that you practice doing that um, because it's good. It's good to be able to use the table to find these values. That's what you'll be doing during exams. But if you are in the real world using statistics at any time, you're probably going to have access to Excel. So let me show you how you get the exact same answer using Excel. Remember how we do this. Now, there's actually a couple of different ways we could do this. So if I want a probability, so that's an area to the left, I type equals N-O-R-M dot D-I-S-T. This is gonna give me a probability for a normal distribution, open parentheses, and it'll tell you what you're supposed to enter. It asks for the X value, the mean, the standard deviation, and whether or not you want the area to the left. And if I use the Z values, let's use the Z values first. We'll say I want my Z to equal 0 0.67. Um, if I'm talking about a standard normal distribution, and I am when I'm talking about Z scores, the mean is zero, the standard deviation is one, and when we say, is that I, do I want a cumulative distribution function? That is, do I want area to the left of that z squared? Say yes, so true. That gives me 0 0.75. And let's go out a couple of decimal places so we can see if it agrees to four decimal places. 0 0.7486, that's exactly what we had in our table. OK, good. Now I want to do the same thing with z equals negative 1.33. So I want the area to the left of z equals negative 
So I type equals norm.dist, normal distribution. My z-score is negative 1.33. The mean for a standard normal distribution is zero. A standard deviation is one, and we do want area to the left, so we'll say true. And we get this value. And so when we round to four decimal places, we get the same value that we had in our table there. Now I wanna show you that you can use the same function, but you can, also, you can use the mean and standard deviation of the IQ scores. If you're using Excel, you actually don't have to convert to Z scores at all, which is very nice. So I would type equals N-O-R-M dot D-A-S-T. And I would take that X equals, well, actually let's write it down on the paper first. If I want the probability that X is between 80 and 110, I could write that this way. I want the area to the left of 110. So that's the probability that X is less than 110 minus the probability that X is less than that value, which happened to be 80. So I can use this instead. Now let's go to Excel. So I will use 110 here. Oops. So that's my X value. And they want the mean of this normal distribution. Well, for IQ scores, that's 100. Standard deviation is 15. And yes, we want cumulative area, area to the left. Round to four decimal places. Ooh. Looks like we got a different value for some reason. Hmm. Well, I think it has to do with rounding, actually. And then let's look at, um, that was 110. And now let's look at uh, x being less than 80. So I want normal distribution. I want x to equal 80. The mean is 100. The standard deviation is 15. And yes, we want area to the left. Well, this differs a little bit, doesn't it? Now, if I take the difference between these guys, I'll do this minus, oops. For some reason it doesn't like that. So we'll say this minus this value, or I have this minus this value. They're close, but this one's off, or they're, or they're different from each other by 0 0.0005. Hmm, something's not quite right there, but I think it has to do with accuracy. Um, I think it has to do with rounding errors that come from not using Z equals negative four over three, but using Z equals negative 1.33. And instead of using Z equals two over three here, we're using Z equals approximately 0 0.67. I think that's where it comes from. I'm not 100% sure, but you should have gotten the same thing either way. And you can see that it's close but there's a little bit of a rounding difference. Okay, now let's go to the homework and make sure that we're giving uh, my lab statistics what they want. Now I'm going to use the ones from the table, 0.6568. I'm very curious to know if it would also accept that 0 0.6563, but we'll have to try that next time. <laughs>